Good morning and welcome to the Kill Co Market Update. Last Sunday we saw the collapse of travel company Thomas Cook and it went under with over £1.8 billion worth of debt. Now bondholders and banks, including RBS, who lent the company money are not expected to get anything back. Now Thomas Cook goes all the way back to 1841, so it really is quite sad that such a long-running and well-known brand has gone under. Now there are several different reasons for this. One is perhaps the weakness in the pound, which has made going abroad slightly less attractive to UK consumers. And Another is the rise in the popularity of low-cost airlines, and that has encouraged people to put together their own holidays rather than going with a package operator such as Thomas Cook. We've also seen an increase in online competition, for example, from other online package operators such as Debt to Holidays and On the Beach. And furthermore, Thomas Cook has been criticised for being particularly weak in the online market. So lots of different reasons there that have led to the eventual demise of Thomas Cook. Now have a look at this chart here which compares the share prices of Thomas Cook, Tui, Dark Group which owns Jet2 and On The Beach over the last year. Now this chart shows index share prices. So they start at 100% and we can see the percentage change in the share prices over the course of the last year. So you can see that Thomas Cook obviously is by far the worst performer, going from 100% all the way to zero over the course of the last year. The other three have been somewhat more successful, but what's quite interesting is the spike in the three competitors on the day that Thomas Cook went under. And that just shows you that investors in those companies are hoping they will pick up significant amounts of business from Thomas Cook customers. Now, a number of lessons here for us. One is to make sure that companies that we invest in are successful in online operations and in operating in the online world. And another is not to invest in companies that have huge amounts of debts. So as we said, Thomas Cook had over £1.8 billion worth of debt when it went under, and that level of debt was in excess by far of the market cap that Thomas Cook had at the time. And also this week, we've seen a few wobbles in the US market following concerns that President Trump might be impeached. He's been accused of encouraging Ukraine to investigate his Democratic rival. Now, due to this, we've gone all the way back to 1998, and we've had a look at what happened in the market when there were concerns that Bill Clinton might be impeached. So have a look at 1998 on this chart here. You can see a bit of a blip there, and it does really look quite tiny now in comparison to the dot-com crash and the financial crisis that happened later. However, when concerns started to surface that Bill Clinton might be impeached, we did see a sell-off in the market of 20%. So between July and October of 1998, as concerns mounted that he might be impeached, the market went down by 20%. However, between October, when the impeachment proceedings were formally started, and February of the following year, when the president was formally acquitted, we actually saw a rise in the market of 33%. And we know that Bill Clinton Clinton actually went on to win another election after this. So if history tells us anything, it might possibly be saying that we could be in for some volatility in the S&P 500, but it doesn't mean it will be negative over the longer term. And finally this week, the Supreme Court in the UK has ruled that Boris Johnson's prorogation of Parliament was unlawful. So MPs have returned this week to Parliament and we have seen some fairly heated scenes. Now this ruling by the Supreme Court does feel like a fairly significant piece of news. However, we have to admit that it doesn't really leave us with any clearer view of what exactly is going to happen with Brexit. Boris Johnson is still adamant that we will be leaving the EU on the 31st of October, just over four weeks from now, and we're left wondering whether or not he will respect the Ben Act that forces him to abandon a no-deal Brexit. So hardly any clarity here at all. And in fact, one of the policymakers from the Bank of England this week has said that because of the lack of clarity over Brexit, the Bank of England may be forced to reduce interest rates. And those comments alone have actually caused a fall in the pound of 0.4%. So really this does show us that we at the moment have no more clarity over what is going to happen with Brexit. Now moving on to the week ahead, we have got a number of companies reporting and we are looking ahead to results from Ferguson, PepsiCo and Tesco. That's it from us. Have a great weekend and we'll see you next Friday.